Hey guys, good afternoon. I am Sandra Ezekwesili and these are your hard facts. I just found out that I have an intern now and her name is Sandra too. Interesting stuff. So if people hear me saying, Sandra, please go and get something. Don't get confused, you know, it's my intern I'm talking to. <laughs> Fact of the day, Afcon is not letting me drink water drop cup. Eh, eh, eh. See, that's the thing they go. Eh? But today I finally, finally managed to uh, get some hard facts to you. Second hard fact of the day, COVID is still out there. We've got 432 new uh, cases. 163 of those cases are from Lagos. So please keep taking your precautions. Wear a mask whenever you are out and about or when you're around people. Give them gap as much as you can. Keep your distance. Wash your hands. Sanitize your hands. Protect yourself. Protect the people that you care about. Third hard fact of the day. Anambra Governor-elect Chukwuma Soludo has named Obi Ezekwesili as the head of his transition team. Dr. Ezekwesili, who I'm not related to, is a former vice president of the World Bank. She's a former minister um, of uh, mineral, mineral, mineral resources. She was first uh, a minister of mineral resources then of education. She's also a co-founder of Transparency International and she served as head of the federal government's uh, budget and price intelligence unit where she got um, that nickname, Madame Due Process. Again, we are not related at all. <laughs> Now, of course, Lagos, if you witness a news story, we want to hear about it. Uh, tell us by calling us on 01465-7175. 0-1-465-7175. One million Lagosians cannot be wrong. So if you think that it's news... It probably is. I have a great show for you today, starting with the big three. Let's talk about President Buhari lifting the Twitter ban. It's the biggest conversation in the... Then let's talk about the report on the fourth portal's collapse. And then let's talk about more reactions to a possible Tinubu presidential run. After that, uh, uh, we'll uh, play you some uh, documentaries prepping you for Afcon's, uh, Afcon coverage from 4.30. I have just one hour with you today. But, uh, um, you know, it's great. It's always great. Uh, Cameroon will take on Ethiopia today, so I'm looking forward to watching that match as well. Let me just say right off the bat that I'm a huge fan of our goalkeeper, Maduka Okoye. I'm praying for him. I wish him all the best. Um, you know, in, 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 in Saturday's match, I will be watching and I will be rooting for that gentleman you know he's a fine gentleman also a very great goalkeeper so shout out to him you know expect news business and sports at the top of the hour every hour but let's get started with today's big three lagos i'm sandra ezekwesili and these are your hard facts What if anything was gained or lost by the Twitter ban? What was gained or lost by the Twitter ban? How efficient is the Lagos Building Control Agency? And is any question about a politician's public life off limits? Is any question about a politician's business, public life off limits. Those are three stories. Lego, let's talk. The Twitter ban has been lifted. That's our first story, but you already knew that. The announcement came yesterday, and by midnight, Twitter could now be accessed over Nigerian telco networks without a VPN. The government says that it lifted the ban because it has reached a deal with Twitter. Here's what the Nigerian government says that the deal entails. The Nigerian government says that Twitter has agreed to register a legal entity with the CAC during the first quarter of this year. The Nigerian government says Twitter is enrolling uh, the government on its partner support portal and law enforcement portal. Let me explain what those are. The PSP is a platform where governments and groups can report tweets that violate Twitter rules. So basically stuff like hate speech, right? 
The LEP is another platform, the LEP. It's another platform, but specifically for police and other law enforcement agencies. If they think that a tweet is a part of a crime or that that tweet is promoting a crime, they can report to Twitter using the law enforcement portal. But here's the interesting thing. These two portals already existed before the Twitter ban. They've been around for years. Lots of governments around the world are signed up to the Partner Support Portal without having to ban Twitter. You just have to apply. In fact, Twitter doesn't stop any government from being on the portal. We talked about this last year. I don't know if you remember, I had a couple of guests in the studio to discuss the Twitter ban. One of them was Chief Andy Oboforibo. And he mentioned these portals and he gave statistics about how many reports the Nigerian government has filed through them. And he said it was zero. Over the last seven years, zero. Did the Nigerian government need to ban Twitter to access a portal that most national governments around the world are already using. Another element of this deal that uh, the Nigerian government is mentioning is that Twitter has agreed to appoint a country representative for Nigeria to interact with the government. That's what the Nigerian government says. The statement also says that um, the global policy team will be made available to get reports from the government. But, but... Like the PSP and LEP, this was already true before the Twitter ban. So the only change here is the country representative. Again, again, Lagos, I ask you, was a Twitter ban needed to get that? And was it worth it? The next thing the government mentions is that Twitter has agreed to, quote, comply with applicable tax uh, obligations on its operations under Nigerian law, end quote. Now, this is an interesting one because the question is, what are Twitter's tax obligations under Nigerian law? Twitter's main revenue source is advertising, promoted tweets. If you look at Twitter's data, Nigeria is not a strong market for its ads. The people making money from Twitter in Nigeria are the Nigerian businesses on Twitter. So it's going to be very interesting to see whether this uh, tax commitment ends up meaning anything in terms of actual revenue for the government. The final resolution, according to the federal government, is that Twitter agrees to, quote, act with a respectful acknowledgement of Nigerian laws and the national culture on which such legislation has been built and work with the federal government and the broader industry to develop a code of conduct in line with global best practice applicable in almost all developed countries, end quote. So... That's it. Now, Twitter has reacted to the lifting of the ban, but they've not commented on these alleged conditions. That's why I keep saying, uh, or I kept saying, that the Nigerian government says that Twitter has. <laughs> now, what Twitter said was, we are pleased that Twitter has been restored for everyone in Nigeria. Our mission in Nigeria and around the world is to serve the public conversation. We are deeply committed to Nigeria, where Twitter is used by people for commerce, cultural engagement and civic participation, end quote. Now, I'm sure you noticed that uh, from the statement from Twitter, there's no mention of any deals or concessions there. And many Nigerians on Twitter are asking whether the administration has other reasons for lifting the ban, perhaps political reasons. Because you know that uh, the 2023 elections are a year and a month away. Campaign season has unofficially kicked off with various APC members declaring their presidential ambitions. Twitter has been a major campaign ground in the last three elections, especially for the APC, who used Twitter massively uh, in 2015 and uh, 2019. In fact, lots of pro-APC and pro-Buhari handles have flooded back onto Twitter today. Lots of them tweeting about how the ban was a massive success and the end is a victory for the president over Twitter. And I want to know if you agree. 
And if you believe that there's a political element to the timing of the lifting of the ban. So different issues that I've tabled out uh, for you today. And I would love to get your, your, your thoughts on all of them. What gains do you think have been made from this ban? What losses? Was there a political motive to when the ban was lifted? 90% of people who are voting on Twitter right now say yes. What do you say? Women, call us on 01465-7190. 01465-7190. Men, call us on 0700-993-993-993. We've got Facebook. Facebook is Nigeria Info 99.3. We've got Twitter now. And I'm allowed to say Twitter now. We've got Twitter at Nigeria Info FM. We've got WhatsApp. WhatsApp is 80 959 And yes, you can take part in the poll on Twitter at the moment as well tell us if you think that um the timing has something to do with politics i'm sandra ezekwasili this is the big three on hard facts on the big three we take a look at the biggest stories of the day we pick three of them and we let you have your say on these topics 99.3 hello <laughs> hello hello yeah my name is karina i'm calling from Ikorodu. welcome karina good to have you on the show Yes, Sandra, Nigeria problem not they finish, eh? Mm. I just want to wish you I just want to congratulate you on your new appointment. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, congratulations for a job Th well done. Thank you. Thank you, Karina. Um, yes, mm. I'm on the same page too with Maduka Okwe. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, girl. Yeah, you know? Amen. All right. Thank you very much for calling. Ninety nine point three. Hello. Good to have you on the show, sir. What's your name? Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Congratulations for your new uh, appointment. Thank you. Whenever I had a good news about you, I feel so much happy. Oh. And God, we could not bless you for that. <laughs> my name is Azubika Kosmolio Shodi. Welcome, Azubika. Thank you, my president. Mm. Coming to this uh, Twitter ban mm -hmm. of Twitter lifting mm -hmm. by federal government, this is a, a government that is not, uh, is not ready to help people. Or not uh, uncompetent of leading of people, and you see them with different attitudes. You know why they leave this uh, Twitter band? Why? It's because of very soon my campaign will start. They will use it to be campaigning about uh, opposition. Why Nigeria are suffering of bandit Boko Haram, kidnapping, and other things? Government cannot be able to stop it for us. What they are, they, are, they are after is all about Twitter. And uh, what I see is this uh, uh, Twitter band. Since when Twitter is not a uh, thing, they have Nigeria have another platform to do their business online. Is not true. Okay. I think it's true, really. Okay. So what I see that uh, is because of the campaign is around the corner. That is why they don't flip the Twitter band. Because they don't, they don't have anything to offer to us again. What we can be able to do is just have patience and get our PGC and wait for them for 2023. That's the only thing I can be able to say. Thank you, Azubike, for calling. I appreciate it. 99.3, hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's your name, sir? Jess Lope. Welcome, Jess Lope. It is the plan. They are, they are setting themselves up for 2023. Okay. But they don't know that they have failed already. We know what they are trying to do. So you should start tweeting about them. You can see, like what you said, uh, all those uh, Buaris, they've come online, they've been saying it's a win for them. I don't even believe whatever the federal government is saying until I hear it from Twitter themselves. All the things they said, uh, Twitter is ready to do this, is ready to, to do that. So Twitter will now come down. As if Twitter, as if Nigeria is providing for Twitter. What is Nigeria doing for Twitter? No matter what they did, they did during the time of banning, I was using Twitter. So the, whether they, they lifted it or not, I was not... In fact, I'm disappointed in them lifting the ban. They should have left it. Another government will come in because they know they cannot enter there again. I know that. See, another government will unban it. So them banning it is even annoying me because I was using my Twitter. And I'm still going to be using it that way. I don't need them to unban or do anything. They have failed and they will fail.
Thank you very much for calling. Let's take a look at Facebook. Uh, the comments there. Uh, Bola Bash says, Twitter ban is a win-win for Nigeria. If government wants to use Twitter to campaign, did anybody stop opposition to campaign on Twitter? Olua Shiagu Moses says, they know that the borrowing is too much and if they don't free it now, it will affect them financially and politically. I don't know what you're talking about. Franklin Mbedoro on Facebook says, I don't know... Uh, Okay, what are you people talking about? Which borrowing? What borrowing? Huh? <laughs> What's happening? Let me go back to the phone lines. Night to nine point three. Hello. Oh, sorry about that. Call back if you can. Hello. Good afternoon. Hello. Good Hello. Afternoon. Good afternoon. What's your name? Yeah, Prince is my name. Hi, Prince. Good to have you on the show. Tell me what you think. Yeah, I just want to ask a question, please, Sandra. Mm -hmm. Is there a provision for visually impaired people to vote during the coming election? Because that is very paramount to me, visually impaired community. As regards the Twitter uh, uh, listing of Twitter ban, it's just for campaign purposes. They, they know they have else to offer, and that is why we, the visually impaired, and I myself, I want to see how I can use the TVC wisely. Okay. So please, this question I'm asking, mm -hmm. is there a provision or a facility or a, a possibility for a visually impaired to vote during the upcoming election? All right. Um, uh, thank you so much for calling. Yes, INEX says that they are making uh, provisions for um, people who are living with uh, disabilities. Now, I don't know specifically if there are uh, provisions for perhaps a document made in... Uh, made in uh, uh, Braille, but um, I do know that INEC uh, continues to say that they, they make provisions for uh, people who are living with disabilities. We will have uh, the INEC spokesperson on the Morning Crossfire on Monday, I believe. When he joins on Monday, uh, I'll, I'll you, you be sure to give us a call back and ask that question. I'll also uh, put Sheriff uh, on notice so that he asks that question as well. Tune into the Morning Crossfire Monday from 5 a.m. Uh, the guests will probably be here around 8 a.m. so you can have that conversation with him. The Lagos State Building Control Agency says that work began at four score towers before they gave their approval. That's our second story. We heard this from uh, well, we had, we had this at the coroner in, in inquest into the building collapse that killed 46 people in Ikoi. I promised to keep bringing you all the updates from that inquest. So here's the latest one. Um, uh, uh, LSBCA was cross-examining um, Murichala Olawale, the MD of Prowess Engineering. I'm sure you remember that Olawale was the engineer who withdrew from the project, citing discrepancies with the approvals. Uh -huh. So while questioning Olawale at the inquest, the LS, uh, LASBCA lawyer, A.S. Odugwemi, asked him whether the developer told him before the project started that he had gotten approvals. Olawale said yes, that uh, Femi Oshibona had told him so. But Odugwemi, the Lagbaka uh, lawyer, insisted that approvals did not come until almost four months after the project had started. And when I saw that, I, I, I asked myself, how is it possible for an unapproved construction project to be ongoing in Lagos without uh, lab cabin aware? I mean, <laughs> is it not their job to make sure that only projects they approve happen? Now, I know that Lagos is densely populated, lots of neighborhoods to cover, but nobody said that it should be easy now. I mean, how are other big cities or states handling this? Because I did some research. And I found out that in other countries, they set up their building control agencies by dividing a city into zones. The agency has an office for each zone. And then each zone office assigns officers to each neighborhood in the zone. Those officers have to patrol the zone routinely just to confirm that there's no construction going on that the, ag that the agency doesn't know about. And if such construction is eventually discovered, the officers from that zone and, and uh, neighborhood are liable. And that's making me ask who and who are the L L A A L A S B C A were responsible for enforcement between January and April of 2019. 
Why did they allow a building to start going up without the necessary approvals? Because this question is based on the assumption that their statement at the coroner inquest is true. What does this agency need to be doing differently? The Lagos State Building Control Agency. What do they need to be doing differently to better enforce the building approvals regime in the state? You can still talk about the lifting of the Twitter ban. It's the biggest story in the country today. So let's hear thoughts on that subject while you talk to me about this second story. Uh, women, call us on 01465-7190. 01465-7190. Men, call us on 0700-993-993-993. We've got WhatsApp still. WhatsApp is 080 959 Hello, thanks for calling us. Good afternoon, Sandra. Good afternoon, sir. What's your name? Yes, this is Ufuma from my daughter. Is, uh, Welcome, Ufuma. Go ahead. Yes, thank you. Uh, more tonight, Sandra, let me just appreciate for a job well done. Thank you. You know, I was telling one of your colleagues during the week, one of the things I like about you that you always try to uh, enlighten your caller. You know, if they are going one direction, try to bring them back and properly enlighten them. I think that that is one of the best things for journalists to do enlighten their color and let them know what is right for them to see and what is not right for them to see on me. Okay. Let me now quickly go back to your question. You know, this collapse of beauty, the story about it is just corruption because I follow most of the interview grants for Channel TV and it's everything is of corruption, corruption, corruption. Look, the Alan is really just said just now. The truth of it is that we did not have a good follow-up people that monitor the Nigeria beauty section in Lagos City. Even though they have a properly monitor, when they are giving them a bribe, the best thing for them to be, they will just overlook it. So that's why most of the things that happen that beauty now collapsing left and right, that there's no proper follow up of the area of beauty in Lagos. So the simple instruction that is just corruption that causes this thing. Before I draw, let me just go back to the Tinubu issue. Hmm. Sandra. Hmm? Hello? Yes, I'm here. Mm -hmm. Yes, I pray that God will keep all of us alive. Yes, mm -hmm. Nigeria are preparing and everybody is preparing. Mm -hmm. But I just pray that the better candidates come to the presidential in 2020. Because, you know, but, you know, I was following that the interview granted that he uh, says he has done it in Lagos State. Yes, mm -hmm. those the people he feels in Lagos State. Is it the will of the people? Not all of them are the will of the people, but his own will. But let's see what we come out. The primary is ahead of them. The APC, let's use it. I'll just speak for Nigeria. They should vote a man that will give us a better life, not a man that will be there and feel his own people there. All right. Thank you very much, Ufoma, for calling. All right, Lagos, we'll take a break. When we come back, let's get right into the Tinubu story. Reactions still coming in on that story. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. This is Hard Facts on 99.3 Nigeria Info. This is the Big Three. The Big Three. On Hard Facts. On 99.3 Nigeria Info. People always make me laugh when they talk. See, I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. Our third story is one that broke while I was away. Bola Tinubu saying that he's told the president the truth about his presidential ambition. Reactions to that have, of course, uh, been pouring in. Uh, and in the wake of Tinubu's um, half 
declaration, the various groups supporting him have ramped up their on-air and online endorsements. And so we heard from Abdumumin Jibrin. He's the director general of the Tinubu Support Group, one of the biggest pro-Tinubu structures in the country. Rufai Yuseni asked him about uh, Tinubu's age and the source of Tinubu's wealth. And here is how that conversation went down. I'd like to know how did he make his wealth? How did he make this so much very big wealth that he can afford a bullion van prior to an election in his home? That's a staggering, colossal amount of wealth. How did that wealth come about? Because I think if I check his resume, the last thing I saw was a contact with mobile. You know, what, what business does, does he do? He's been in government for a while. How did he make that wealth? That's one. Two, there's been discrepancies about his age. I ask you, how old is he? Uh, well, let, let me tell you, you see, uh, these this, this two questions you've just uh, posed, uh, it's part of what I have answered earlier. I think at this point that we've got into, our emphasis should be on the third degree of this candidate, what he has demonstrated that he has done, what he has achieved, how he has changed the revenue of Lagos State, how he has put a long-term plan to implement infrastructure, Honorable infrastructure, Jibre. how he has ensured that he instilled discipline, Honorable Jibre. how much people that he has built. Honorable Jibril. These are the focus that we should concentrate on. Honorable Jibril. Because most of these political issues that we keep raising front and back will not solve the problem. So the emphasis now, the focus now, should be on the capacity and the competence okay. of this candidate. Honorable Jibril, how did Bola Metinubu yes. make his money? That's all I want to know. You can tell me and what we can focus and, on. And, and we'll talk why, about it in the manifesto. How and, did Bola Tinubu make so much money that he had a bullion van in his home on election day? And how old well, is he? Those are the questions that well, people are uh, asking out there. How old is he? Well, how did he I'm make also, the billions? I'm also putting it... I'm also now, you've asked your question clearly, and I will give you a simple and clear answer. And, now, and, as, and when you continue to repeat the question, you will get the same answer. These are all trash from the internet that people keep putting it together, and we will not elevate such conversations. But when the campaign commences, we will bring out facts and figures and put before Nigerians. But we will not create a narrative for them. So for now, the emphasis is on the competence of the candidate, what he has achieved, the network he has built, the people he has invested in, and his plan for a better Nigeria. All right. Uh, can, can I ask you this? How was this trash? Bullion Van was found in his home. The pictures were viral, and there's been no denial. So how are you saying that is trash? And how... Is it trash that we want to know how the person that will lead Nigeria made so much wealth? You know, and also the declaration of being rich and it also is. state. So how, that's not trash. What, how did he make his money? That's all I want to know. And tell me how old he is. So I can take you by something. Because there's been discrepancies too by the people of his age and his wealth. It's just a question I'm asking. Please. And... And, and the Rufai is just an answer that I'm giving you as well. Uh, you see, un unfortunately, you are posing the question as a journalist. What will satisfy you is when I say things the way you want me to say it. So you don't want to respect my own response. And I think okay. it is unfair okay. and probably very unprofessional. Okay, because the brain. response is simple. We've raised, we've raised, we've raised issues here about corruptions. I gave instance with even Ruben Abati himself, and I gave several instances of a lot of politicians in Nigeria where you will see stuff like this on the internet. Well, and we said we are not going to elevate such... You can watch uh, the rest of that interview online. Of course, we, we also showed it to you on our live stream. Um, you can watch our live stream. Our live stream is Nigeria Info 99.3. We're still showing it to you at the moment. So there you have the head of a support group for a possible presidential candidate not seeming to be able or maybe willing to answer directly about his preferred candidate's age and how he made his money. This has sparked quite a lot of conversation. 
Many Tunubu supporters are saying that the question was inappropriate. But almost everybody else is saying that the questions are in order. Now, let me first answer this from a journalistic perspective before I ask you as voters for your opinion. Since we're discussing journalism, let me be expert today. <laughs> and as journalists, we are taught that any information that a politician is expected to declare is acceptable as the object of a question. So since our laws expect a politician to declare their assets, it is fine for a journalist to ask what those assets are and what he does for a living to get them. Like CNN hounding Donald Trump for his tax returns. Now, as journalists who are covering politics, we also have a duty to the public to give you all the information that could affect your decision about whom to vote for, as long as no ethical lines are crossed. Now, some voters want to know whether a candidate has worked a real job, for example, or whether all the wealth that the candidate displays has a legitimate source. Some voters don't care. Which voter are you? Do you believe that the questions Rufai asked are relevant or not? And do you subscribe to the idea that there are questions that should not be asked about a candidate's public life. If you think that there are some questions we should not ask a candidate about his public life, what are those questions? Why should they not be asked those questions? What you and I are going to do for this political season eh, is talk honestly. We will talk honestly. I will ask you really tough questions because we cannot be caught sleeping at the wheel. Not anymore. We can't afford it. This is too serious. The future of this country is too serious. We all cannot be sleeping at the wheel anymore. So again, do you believe that the questions Rufai asked were relevant or not? Do you subscribe to the idea that there are questions that should not be asked about a candidate's public life? I'm emphasizing public. What are the questions we should not ask them about their public life? Why shouldn't we ask those questions about their public life? Why is there anything about a candidate's public life that should not be made known to the voter to help them form an informed opinion? This is not about Tinubu alone. It's about aspirants in general. In the coming weeks, we will talk about everyone who has thrown their hat in the ring already, including Oji Zokalu, Dave Umahi, and Kingsley Mogalu. Right now, let's talk about the generalities. Should any question about a candidate's public life be off limits? What do you think about uh, Abdul Mumin Jibrin's uh, response to Rufai? Do you think that he lived up to his role as the head of a support organization? 0700993993993. Men call me on that number. Women call me on 01465-7190. Uh, you can also share your thoughts via WhatsApp. WhatsApp is 80 959 99.3. Hello? Sorry about that. Call back if you can. 99.3. Hello. Hello, Sandra. Thanks for calling. What's your name? Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, based on uh, this discussion about Inubu and the, the Jubri guy, you, you just imagine, it's like public life. We call it public. I think there, there are opinions, and there's a right to ask about any questions. Public life. Because you're going to be a leader tomorrow. Who knows? Maybe you are going to be the head of state or the president tomorrow. So everybody deserves, the masses deserve to know about your public life. And I don't know why Jubril is just merry-go-rounding and merry-go-rounding about. 
the question. It's not a rocket science. Age. Why can't you provide your the person you are supporting his age? Secondly, how does he make so much money? What is so hard about it? So the way is just stammering. I'm I'm just being curious. Like, are these the people we are going to hand over the fate of Nigeria in 2023? Sandra, let's ask ourselves a very real question. Oh, I don't think some something is not right. Hmm. Thank you so much for calling. Right, nine point three. Hello. Hello. Thanks for calling. What's your name? Yeah. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is Joy. Calling from Ikeja. Joy, welcome. Go ahead. Yes. See, um, I like um, the way you started. Yes, concerning this Tinubu issue, and I like the fact that you said that uh, you start to ask real questions because this is soft time, and we don't need to sleep like we are, like we've been sleeping before now. And uh, journalists are always very scared to ask uh, the germane question questions, and which are the real questions that we need our leaders to to answer, so so we can hold them. To, you know, to wait. So see the way he's rigmaroling. It's a simple uh, question. How old is he? What does he do? So if actually um, he, he believes that the, um, he's actually doing one or two things, he should say, state this is, who, this is who he is or this is his age. It's not something that, is, um, uh, that, that needs you to go back home and think and analyze among yourselves and before you come out to tell us this is what you are. So to me, I like... Yeah, the doggedness you're going to start this uh, political time because 2023 is around the corner and we shouldn't uh, sleep and be laughing with our leaders and be telling them, oh, uh, oh they, they say one thing, throw one joke at us, we just laugh, you know, and we are dead, dying in silence. I love, I love this and I, I'm going to be all the way uh, you know, with you with all these questions with our politicians. Thank you. Thank you, Joy, for calling. We appreciate it. 99.3, hello. Hello, Sandra. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's your name, sir? My name is Gideon Osushoma. Welcome, Gideon. from Lagos Island. Good to have you on the show. Yeah, Sandra, first of all, let me start by just join me to thank God. God has done something good for me and my family. Okay. I'm a father of a young son. Congratulations. Yeah, you remember the first uh, two, I think your first three months when you came to Nigeria in full. Mm. You brought some doctors. I caught that time that how my wife lost my baby. Mm. Mm. Oh, so yes, I remember. I remember. Yes. Oh, congratulations, my man. Yes, I'm you, happy Andrew. for you. Congrats. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, coming to this uh, topic, mm-hmm. I think Rufai will say me to be an extraordinary and excellent job. That, those questions are weird, I mean, and to me, I, mean, I thought if somebody like Jimmy Dissou mm. would have asked the man to apologize to Nigerians for saying that these are the trash. And Nigerians dig up in the internet. Okay. Yeah. So I think the man, the Jubilee man of the Jubilee of the thing, if he's the one heading that of the, or the campaign organization, I think the meeting is on, he's on the wrong place already. Thank you, Sandra. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for calling. 99.3. Hello. Hello, Sandra. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's your name, sir? Olumuiwa, calling from Niger. Olumuiwa, do you think somebody in the role of Jibrin should be expected to have that information? My sister, mm. that question they asked you be mm. is a trash. Okay. It's a trash. Okay. The last time it's a trash. Okay. The one of the reasons I voted for Buhari, mm. which I don't think I will vote in my life anymore. Okay. It's because he said I want to fight corruption. Okay. And when he said I want to fight corruption, to know is number one in my ass then. So why are they not asking that question now? Now, if thank God we all made it to this year, this is a dramatic year for all of us. Mm. Thank God. Now I happy that they had that question. Now we want to know who gave me cano generator that did not allow Nigeria electricity to work. So if that is how they want to start their own campaign and question and answer, let's start it from there. Okay. Let's start it. Everyone that is coming out, let's start them. Okay. So so that you're that saying Okay, one? okay. So you're saying those questions are good if we're asking everybody the question. Is that the what you're saying? Thing I said here. Okay. Why are they not asking all these questions about six years ago? I think I asked before yes. So before. ask so ask who? Ask who this question Tinubu? six years ago. Tinubu was not running for president six six years ago. He's running now. Good. Allegedly. So good. Now that he's running, I love the question. And anyone that wants to come out with the question should start from there. Can we know your age? How do you make your money? 
my office can ask me, you just buy a car, hmm. how did you get this car? Good hmm. question. Okay. But let's not be tribalism. It has started with Tunubu. It must start with all of them, including Atiku. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, Atiku hasn't declared, has he? And uh, um, the, the first person uh, to declare his intentions to the president was, uh, uh, what's his name now? Alhaji Ahmed Tunubu. Now, away from Tunubu, we've also had Kingsley Mogalu. Uh, we now have Oji Zokalu. We now have um, uh, Dave Omahi. And when those people's uh, support groups or structure... Uh, spokespersons go to the media to speak do you think that there are certain questions that are off limits that's the conversation we're having on the show today are there questions that are off limits for public servants who want to run for office in nigeria what are those questions that are off limits why should they be off limits why is there anything about a candidate's public life that should not be made known to the voter to help the voter form an informed opinion? 0700 Hello. Hello, Sandra. Thanks for calling. What's your name, ma'am? Uh, Mrs. Bochi, please, my husband wants to speak to his phone half problem, please. <laughs> This is this is cheating, though, Mrs. Bucci. But okay, give your husband the phone. Hello, hello, Sandra. hello, Mr. Bucci. Welcome. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Congratulations for your appointment. Thank you. In the early appointment. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, I'm grateful for that. Mm. Um, we're coming to Twitter ban. Mm-hmm. But federal government has just um, twisted themselves. They are not twisting Nigeria, but we're starting from there. Okay. And everything that is going on in Nigeria now, Twitter ban is one of them that. What they did, they just want to start their uh, campaign trail. Okay. I will come to Tinubu hmm. or Jibril. Okay. They should forget in that uh, uh, the vice president now declare his asset and how he gets his money. How he reached to ninety billion. Now they ask Jibril. Jibril is from Kanu, and he did not know what is happening in Lagos. Okay. And they give me a campaign support team, other chairman of that. Hmm. Now, everybody of presidential kind of governorship candidate in Nigeria now, because it's a new turn in Nigeria. Okay. It's 2023 election. Mm. Everybody, the candidate, the electorates are very out for everybody. Okay. They must ask that question to them. Okay. Their age, how they get their money, and what they've been doing for a long time. Tinubu celebrates 69 years of age. Why and daughter celebrated 60 years of age? I don't know how that becomes Nigeria should be out now. Nigeria should sit up because the battle is on now. All Thank right. you. Thank you, Mr. Bucci, for calling. All right. I know that some of you will now start, you know, calling on behalf of your husbands. Don't do it. I just give grace to Mrs. Bucci. Uh, 99.3. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello, Sandra. Thanks for calling. What's your name? Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Please, what, the only thing I would like to plead on this case is that anybody that wants to come up for presidency or governorship, please, they should be close to us, like these radio stations. Okay. They should come to Nigeria Info, uh, any other stations, where Nigerians can conversate with them fully. Mm-hmm. Not going to where we cannot talk to them. We need to bring them very close to ourselves. Mm-hmm. Like here, now, if there is any issue, you see Nigerians should be called Nigeria Info. Mm-hmm. Please, they should come here, let's ask them those questions ourselves. They should not be going to arise. They should not be going to channels where we cannot speak to them. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much for that vote of confidence. We've got uh, uh, comments on WhatsApp, so let's take a look at some of them. Uh, Olusoga Jai says, For our government's lifting ban of Twitter is highly inconsequential because I didn't see any difference between the banned period and now that it has been lifted. To the best of my knowledge, most Nigerians were still using Twitter since the so-called ban. All right. Thank you very much for your message. I do not think that Jibril is the right person to answer that question. He wasn't hurt. Uh, uh, he wasn't um, smart to redirect the question to Tunubu because he's the person to answer it. I hope you will use the same energy on 
on other oh honey i don't know what you're trying to write please take a look and um rewrite it so that um it can make sense to me president sandra it's very good that they're starting this way it's a tip of the iceberg everyone should prepare to expect more of these things everybody should sit up that's uh TXS. All right, TXS. Thank you very much for your, your message. Ike from Lagos says, uh, this is very clear that these old people that keep recycling themselves in position of power have no genuine intentions. How can he uh, not provide some basic information about his candidate? I must say that this Jibrin guy insulted Nigerians for calling a simple question trash. How can a man that wants to rule Nigerians not tell us where, where the source of his money is from? All right, Ike, thanks for your message. Timothy from Ikeja says, um, Sandra, I believe that uh, more questions are coming with what uh, what did uh, Ahmed Bola Tinubu have to say about his campaign in 2014, where he said that the only way to have steady light and fuel is to remove good luck, Jonathan. I promise you in six months, Nigeria will be swimming in crude oil and fuel. Buhari will pay you all 5000 naira monthly uh, for the jobless. Our youth will be gainfully employed with 3 million jobs a year. Another question is, what can he do different from President uh, Muhammad Buhari that he presented to us in 2014. All right, Timothy, thank you for your message. Sam from Maraba in Abuja says, mm, I need a link to download Nigeria in for Abuja. Sam, just go to your WhatsApp, okay? Go to your WhatsApp, sorry, your Play Store. If you're using an Android, go to your Play Store, search for Nigeria Info, download it, and you can listen to uh, Lagos, Abuja, Port Harcourt, from wherever you are in the world. If you don't have a phone uh, that has a Play Store, maybe, or your Play Store has some issues, just log on to www.nigeriainfo.fm and listen to all our stations, any of our stations, www.nigeriainfo.fm. We're in Lagos, we're in Abuja, and we are in Port Harcourt. Hussein on Latin Day says, Rafai's question was inap inappropriate. First, he didn't tell us Tinubu's worth before asking Jibrin questions relating to his wealth. At times, many rumors are attributed to him that isn't true. Also, his age is in the public purview. Well, uh, um, Rufai was saying that there were discrepancies about his age, you know. And then, um, but anyways, I mean, that's your response. So thank you very much for your uh, message to us on WhatsApp. We've got uh, Kayode from Ikotun who says, Sandra, this is quite interesting and unfair to Tinubu. Where was Rufai in 2014 when everybody turned Tinubu to political for that Christmas? No sentiment. Everyone in that race are birds of the same feather. Among the robbers, there is a saint. All right. Is Tinubu that saint? We've got Mark Chimera who says, uh, Jibrin turned into fight. Small question. Now, waiting we go face be this season. Hmm. Uh, Sandra, I agree that journalists can ask politicians about their public lives, but the onus is on them to answer or not. Even in courts, people plead the Fifth Amendment. Moreover, the issue of asset declaration had been adjudicated upon by the courts. If anyone has a divergent, if anyone has a divergent opinion about someone's asset, the Code of Conduct Bureau is the right place to forward such complaint. Kunle in Oba with that message there. Um, journalists are also supposed to ask you a question that you're trying to not answer. And they're supposed to ask you that question again and again and again and again until they wear you down and you answer it. We've got um, more messages here. Sandra, the questions asked... Um, okay, no, hold on. I have missed that message. Sandra, our government thinks say they get sense pass us. They'll never see anything. We await them. They just shoot them balls. Uh, that's Ratty from Alaba with that message. All right. Uh... These are basic questions that a lot of we Nigerians are asking. If you can't give us clear answers, I wonder how you're going to lead us and bring back the so-called better Nigeria. Samuel with that, with that, answer, with that uh, post there on uh, WhatsApp. Also on WhatsApp, Godwin from Ikorodu says, Do you know INEC has suspended voter registration for people in Lagos State? Hmm. Okay. Well, we have uh, the a spokesperson joining uh, Sheriff Quadri on Monday at... Um, eight o'clock i believe so make sure you're listening uh, set your reminders now so that you don't miss that interview you can ask all the questions that um, you want to ask we've got a message from Ose who says the questions asked are good but it feels like witch hunt when it's directed at just one candidate atiku had contested several times and never asked such questions that's not true uh, i remember that um 
uh, when he was at the presidential debate, I believe it was, or no, not a debate now, it was a town hall conversation, the same one where President Buhari uh, was speaking with Kadaria Ahmed, I believe, and, um, you know, Oshimba Jo continued to answer Buhari's questions. You remember the one? All right, so when Atiku uh, went there, um, he was asked about how he made his money. He was asked a lot in 2019 about the source of his wealth. He was asked a lot about that. Um, I don't know if he was asked about his age, but again, different journalists are going to at, ask different questions. And this particular journalist decided to ask these particular questions because some Nigerians want answers to these particular questions. Now, my question to you is, are there questions that are off limits for public servants or people who are politicians, who are candidates, questions about their public life. Are there questions that are off limits? Now, you cannot say that this is targeted or it's a witch hunt because it's only one person whom his supporters have been going to the media to have conversations. You have to wait first and see if other candidates are not asked the same question or worse or harder before you can then say, oh, it's a witch hunt. Zero seven zero zero nine nine three nine nine three nine nine three. We've got five minutes. How many people can I can I talk to in five minutes? Let's see. Ninety nine point three. Hello. Hello. How are you? What's your name? Jis Lok, why are you calling back? Welcome, Jis Lok. But no, you can't call yeah. back. You can't call back. Ninety nine point three. Hello. Hello. Thanks for calling. What's your name? Oh no! Call us back if you can. Ninety nine point three. Hello. Hello. Thanks for calling. What's your name? Uh, my name is Elvis. From Elvis, Ecology. good to have you on the show. Go ahead. Okay, um, I don't think anyone to ask a question to anybody that says or he that, or she says that he wants to rule Nigeria, and you ask a question about the public aspect of it for one to know how you get this thing or something like that is there is is never a wrong question because if you want to be a public servant, you have to be ready to answer their questions whenever they ask you questions. So that question is a very good question, which the uh, refire has asked, um, what is it called? Um, uh, the man that is supporting um, 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 Tinubu, I mean. Okay. So it's a nice question. So I don't think, I don't see anything wrong. You don't think it's off limits. All right. Thank you very much for calling. 99.3. Hello. Uh, thanks for calling. What's your name? Yeah, good evening, Sandra. Good evening, what's your name? I am Julie. Hi, Julie. Good to have you on the show. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I don't know the problem of Nigerian. Okay. I don't know why you, they will ask you A, you will say C. I don't know why that man is asking that man question. He's not answering, he never answered that question. How old is this man? And how did he make his money? He did not even talk anything about that at all. He's just dambling the bush, walking around the bush. And at the end of the day, the, he, he said, uh, it's a trash. Why are they saying all that? He never answered any question. And I don't know why Nigerian government, they, they can't answer questions. Simple question, they cannot. Thank you for calling. Click Uti on Facebook. Sandra, oh, if we cannot ask Tinubu questions now, is it when he enters power, ordinary Nigerians can ask him? How does Tinubu make his money? Uh, Tinubu ruled Lagos for eight years and he became a bullion van man. The age he declared now is different from the one on Wikipedia. 99.3, hello. Hello, hello. Good to have you on hello. the show. Yeah. Yeah, my name is Jink. I'm calling from Oba. Good to have you on the show. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, I, I just want to corroborate you. I actually said one of the things I said, um, I mean, I wanted to say, which was part, particularly the issue of asking Atiku that same question. Sinubu didn't contest six six years ago. Hmm. He just sponsored one, and this is the actual problem Buhari had in the in the process of electioneering and campaigns and actual voting. Hmm. The issue of Tinumbu overshadowed the integrity Buhari pushed forward there. And that narrative was very difficult for the APC to actually, uh, you know, push over or, or, or you know, Shake overcome. Mm. So now that he is the main guy, I don't know why Nigerians are beating around the bush. The issue here is the fact that you have credibility issues as to the history 
of how your wealth, your age, even your certificates were achieved. I like Chinumbu for his political sagacity. That is clear. The man, this, the, you know, he created a niche, a kind of strategy, whether people like it or not, hmm. he gets the job done. Hmm. I like him for that. Hmm. Some people like uh, this Baba Amala politics in Ibado. Hmm. You might not like him. Other people like him, hmm. and he gets the result done. Hmm. But the issue with this is that Nigeria is growing. Hmm. Our democracy should be devoid of all this kind of sentiment. Hmm. I'm a Tinubu follower, okay. I believe. But the issue is, we should not be sentimental about our issue. I think who was asked about his wealth. They made just of him when he made reference to starting business, selling firewood. Mm. They called him names on that. Mm. I don't like Atiku mm. for anything. Mm. But the issue is that whatever is good for the goose is also good for the Ghana. Right. The who is the main guy. Let them ask questions. Mm. We are the electorate. The kind of arrogance Nigerians are taking in is just alarming. Thank you very much for calling. I wish we had more time, but we do not. Uh, I have to go, but I will be back on Monday. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, we're going to have the big three, big weekend because um, AFCON starts at 4.30. So I will be here on Monday, but coming up, I will play your documentary just to get you ready for the match that starts from 5 o'clock. We've got coverage from 4.30. You can find me on social media in the meantime. I am so Sandra Ezekwesili, S. Ezekwesili, on all social media platforms. Those are your hard facts, Digos. Good night. It's four o'clock. 99.3 Nigeria Info. We are more than just radio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Nigeria Info FM. Check us out on Facebook at Nigeria Info 99.3. Follow us on Twitter at Nigeria Info FM and on Instagram at Nigeria Info FM Lagos for live updates as it happens. 99.3 Nigeria Info.